This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcy Joyner, and this is Community Matters. Today, we are going to talk about the coming election. We just got through all of the primaries. Now we need to look at the parts of the coming election. And one of the biggest things in the election will be on the ballot, and it says, do you want a constitutional convention? So today, we are going to talk about that very thing. Do you want a constitutional convention? What is a constitutional convention and why it's on the ballot? So to do that, we are going to talk to my friend, Ken Farm, who has worked on this issue for a very long time. So. Who better than to talk to somebody that has really been a part of looking at this? Welcome, Ken. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just want to say that I have been looking at this thing. However, there's people who are much older than me that has done much more, and I well, want to put a plug in for them and say, you know, and do what fine. they did. So, so you know. let's, let me tell you, Hawaii's constitution mandates that once a decade, and November 6th, the people of Hawaii be granted the right to call a state constitutional convention. Now, that is in the Constitution. It is, it is mandated. It is mandated. Hawaii's <laughs> framers included this mandate to secure the people's most fundamental and precious political right, the right to reform their government. So, for those of you that complain, even in the face of the legislature's opposition. So, of course, the legislature is going to oppose. Naturally, they're comfortable. They like it like it is. So, that you have to begin to think as we go through this process that the Constitution is more than just a piece of paper that every now and then we bother to read, that it is, it is what our fundamental way we operate in the state of Hawaii and the United States. They're two different things, but we do have this. And so it will be on the ballot, mm -hmm. and you get to choose yes or no. Now, the trick here is if you leave it blank, that counts. Now, on all of the other candidates, if you leave it blank, it's just a blank vote. Mm -hmm. On this one, there is a, the no count, and the Supreme Court gave us that one. Therefore, so talk to us. Talk to me. Well, Ken, don't, I'm not going to do all the talking. Oh, no, no. <laughs> um, so, and I appreciate that, and that was a good background about it. One of the things I think that you know, we have to consider is, um, for myself personally, uh, I am against the con con for this time around. And the reason being is because of the narratives that have been surrounding uh, what the uh, current constitutional convention is going to be like. And one of the ones that I, I use and I've heard a lot is a term called limited convention. Um, a lot of people are talking about how we're going to have a limited convention for whatever specific issue that you're looking mm -hmm. at. And that right there is incorrect. Uh, there is no such thing as a limited convention. Uh, we, there's nothing that we can find in, in any type of in anywhere that is where this is convention is going to be limited and I'm sure that you know you've had experience well, with that and heard people talk about that as well well what what we have to look at is that a constitution written mm -hmm. is like any contract once you open it everything is on the table everything so how do we get to the con con if you vote Yes. If you say yes, then, aha, what happens is if enough people say yes, then there's another election. People have to decide to run as delegates. That's right. Now, that opens up another can of worms. So if 
people want a limited convention, they will have their delegates and they will spend money to run just like any other election. But I think number one is, is there is no such thing as mentioned before as, yeah, as there a limited is. convention. There is no such thing. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm agreeing with so you. So people have been using that term, talking to people about it, and that narrative of, you know, we, we have these issues that we have that are important, but we can create uh, the, the convention just for these issues, and then that's it. Pahana, right? And that's, that's definitely not, not it. That's not it. That's not so it. we have to make sure that people understand that's the full breadth okay. of what is going on. I, you know, like I said, I know people's hearts are in the right place. There is definitely need for change, but is this the right mechanism for to do so? Well, but what we have with this CONCON and the delegates, mm -hmm. everybody gets to, if that's what you want, mm -hmm. then you have to run as a delegate. Right. You've got to get your people to support you as a delegate. That's right. While there are other people that don't want it, they will have their delegates. That's right. They will run also. That's right. And so it's like anything else. Now, once we, they, everybody has agreed, the legislature has to then fund this thing. Mm -hmm. So they get to choose, are we gonna fund this? And by funding, we mean the place it will be held, mm -hmm. all of the office staff, the computers, the paper, turning on the lights, all of those come into the budget. And right. if the legislature says, we can't handle this, <laughs> you know, they'll find a way not to do this. So now that we've got delegates and we have a place to have the convention and the legislature has approved it, now what? So like we said, everything's on the table, right? So I mean, like I said, is there's certainly need for change. And I want to also emphasize that, that it's not saying everything is, is always right in terms of some parts of the Constitution. But it does offer the protections that are needed. For example, for Native Hawaiians, in terms of some of the things that they, they have on there that's specific in the Constitution. Now, the state may not follow it all the time, but at least it's there, you know, and it, we can we, we, uh, go back to it. Another thing, too, is labor. You know, we have the right to collective bargain. Uh, a lot of people see that either way, but that's how a lot of people in Hawaii was able to live in Hawaii. You know, we talk about the cost of living and, and the benefits that go along with work. Well, that wasn't there all the time. You know, weekends were never part of it. Right. So there's a lot of things that we take for granted, even medical care, that could be on the table. We have to look at all those things. Is this the right vehicle for that change? And that's what we need to ask ourselves. Once we understand that there's no such thing as a limited convention, that everything's going to be on the table. Another thing to look at, too, is there's also groups that oppose some of the way that Hawaii has been going on in the first place that will use outside money to try to change what's going on here, too. So it's not just Hawaii itself, and this is our own little area. There's going to be outside influences as well, such as ALEC, you know, American Legislative Exchange Council, and other types of groups, too, as well. Well, you know, um, one of the things that was in the early Constitution was changing the age of which people could vote. And that didn't pass. Mm. It was 21. They wanted it down to 18. That didn't pass. But the federal government changed that. That's right. Uh, that was during the war, yeah, during yeah, Vietnam. During the war, and right. people are saying, look, if we're old enough to die, we're old enough to vote. Mm -hmm. So the feds changed that. So that was one of those times when the federal government overrode the local, but uh, which was a good thing. Mm -hmm. That was that was. Now it's hard to believe that we ever went through that. There were so many things that 1950. I think. Let me make sure before <laughs> I say something. 1950. Yes, I know that's the dark ages for you. But no. <laughs> 1950 convention was called by the territory's legislature and convened in order to draft a state constitution for Hawaii so that Hawaii could be admitted to the Union. Now, 63 delegates were elected to be members of the convention. The convention lasted 101 days, from April 4 to Jul July 22, 1950. The constitution was ratified at the general election on November 7, and that was one of the largest vote turnouts mm -hmm. we have ever had. 82,000 people turned out to vote for that. Um, and at the population at the time, that was That, that was, was huge. High. That's right. Yeah. And that was the beginning of the move 
for statehood. Well, no, that's not the beginning, but that was the move to, for legislation to become a state, not annexed, right. but to become a state. Another thing I wanted to bring out too, since we've all talked about, you know, just you know why it's bad, you know, why it's something that we want to actually visit and understand, you know, what it means uh, as to you know words like limited convention, things that could be lost, as well as groups that could oppose, you know, things that how things are in Hawaii in the first place, is people who want change, there's avenues. And one of the greatest avenues, I think, is a constitutional convention. If you have enough people that have the fervor to want a constitutional convention, then there is also for constitutional amendment. And keep those people engaged. There are things that do need to change. I 100% believe that there are things that do need to change. Um, you know, I think that there needs to be more protections for, for, for uh, Sorry, for uh, employees. Another thing that needs to happen for is like the con constitutional amendment for teachers in terms of how we want to fund. Uh, I, I believe that's something that definitely needs to be looked at and I'm in support of. But also is there are other things too as well. We don't want to risk opening the entire thing up and losing things losing. That, are, that are good, yes. you know, that people have worked really hard for. Yeah, because water rights are in, and we don't want somebody to say, hey, I want to redo this water right. thing. You know, yeah. the shoreline public access, mm -hmm. you know. So we, yeah, it, it can be. But now you talk about constitutional amendments. Those have to go through the legislature. Mm -hmm. The legislature puts them on the ballot, and then we get to vote yay or nay. Um, this year there will be one on taxes. Mm -hmm. There's only two questions. One is on tax, and what, this one is on the con con. I think that part of the issue for me, um, since I'm old enough to remember most of this, uh, is that people do not understand what it is and what it isn't. And when they look at the ballot, I would bet a lot will leave it blank because they don't understand. Mm -hmm. Consequently, you know, the nose wimp. However, um, do, I guess where I'm going with that is our lack of education, mm -hmm. that people do not understand how the government works, who does what, and what this means. If it's opened, even if it's not, what, what are the guide, what the Constitution are guidelines. Mm -hmm. so, if we don't learn, if we don't teach early school what this is about, how can we expect them to vote yes or no? And I definitely agree with you. I think that, you know, we've had this discussion before along with you and a few other people who are decision makers in this. And, you know, I do want to see that we have civics taught more. I mean, they are taught at the elementary school. I mean, when I was there, but I want to see it taught, you know, throughout. throughout. You know, there's some people who want to say that we want to just, you know, teach it in, at university level or you know, That is too late. That is too late. You know, I think that that's something that any fundamental, uh, fundamental citizen needs to know what's going on. And from those times while they're in school, mm -hmm. while they graduate, that's something that should be kind of incorporated within. All along. All yeah. along. So, because it is the government for the people, by the people. Mm -hmm. And unless you know that you are the people, <laughs> you know, right. we the people, that you have an opportunity to participate at lots of levels. You don't have to be elected. Mm -hmm. So we need to take a break. And when we come back, let's look at some other parts of this content. Sure. Okay. Be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. They said I could play, so any chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah, I saw it. Guys, don't forget to check me out right here, The Prince of Investing. I'm your host, Prince Dykes. Each and every Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Hawaii time, 
I'm going to be right here. Stop by here from some of the best investment minds across the globe in real estate, finances, stocks, hedge funds, managers, all that great stuff. Thank you. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Community Matters. Today we're talking with Ken Farm about the Constitutional Convention and the question which is on the ballot in November. So, back to Ken. Um, we have gone through this every 10 years. Mm -hmm. Some years the no's win, mm -hmm. and we don't have one. But let me see, 19, we said 1950. That was about statehood, and that was the largest turnout ever. Mm -hmm. And we talk about no, no turnout, but that was it. It, doesn't, it didn't say that 82,000 people voted for or against. It's just that was the amount of people that turned out. And in um, a 1950s Hawaii, that was a lot. Mm -hmm. That was huge. And... Um, 1968 was one of the big ones, um, and um, let me read this to get it right. 82 delegates to the 1968 convention were chosen at a special election. There were 82 delegates, and most of them, da da were incumbents or ex-legislators. So we know what that means. Mm -hmm. And that bodes for if we have one now and the way people vote for names they recognize, don't we know that. That, that, guess who's going to be? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. So, and, um, it was the 1965 ruled, the federal district court says Hawaii appointed, appointed its state senate seats were invalid, the way they were appointed. The Constitutional Convention was called to amend that, mm -hmm. the way the seats were. Now, and um, 1971, of course, what I remember is that in, in the up to that point, no, the 70s, we had two member house districts. Hmm. They were large, but we had two. And most of them had Democrats and Republicans. So now we come to CONCON and it's to redistrict, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that was the 78 CONCON, which was. We tend to think of the 78 CONCON as all about Hawaiians because that was the excitement. That was the one that created the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, changed the emblem, the state uh, said that you had to teach Hawaiian culture in the schools mm -hmm. and university. So we tend to think of it. But the big thing, or I thought one of the big things, is that the Republicans were campaigning on we need to have a single member district because it's cheaper than funding two people for each district. So they made, they collapsed the districts. And guess what happened in 1980? No Republicans won. Hmm. And they've been complaining about the Democrats <laughs> ever since. But they campaigned on Two member districts mm -hmm. cost too much money. So, with the district, when they redistrict in 1980, they went to a single member district and not one Republican won. And they've been complaining about the Democrats ever since. So, that's a side story. Um, what else happened? 76, of course. Um, most of the time, oh, okay, 1976, the Constitutional Convention, Amendment 2 on the ballot 
about housing. Hmm. The state shall have power to provide or to assist in housing, slum clearance, development, and rehabilitation of substandard areas, and to exercise such power is deemed to be for the public use and purpose. Now, have they done that? No, they haven't. I'm sorry to say it is, you know, there's, they haven't done that. Now, another part, too, is if we were to have a constitutional convention and that's gone, you know, then they would outright, we wouldn't have any kind of recourse, right? right? So I think that is something that we want to consider. Like I, we keep mentioning, you know, people who, ha there are issues. And I think that the constitutional amendment, it is a messy process, but you know what? You're going to have more of, of a say in terms of getting those people. I think that you can get the people who, are, who want these changes as a larger group of people for the different types of things that you're looking at. And it's a much more safer manner in terms of things that you talked about, of, of Native Hawaiians and the protections for you have education. That is taught in, in the high schools, elementary schools, middle school, as well as in the university setting. When, when uh, you think about these things, and it never occurs to you that <laughs> Article 8, Section 4, it says the state has the right to do this. Have they done that? The housing for no. Oh, no, 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 mm -mm. absolutely not. Uh, do they enough, even know that it's in the country? But if there's enough people that are willing to, you know, go around something like this and, you know, either push for a part of an amendment or at least be part of the votership, then that's something that, you know, could constitute them winning their seat or losing their seat. And that's, I think they're going to move in a direction of following that part of the Constitution. 1978 is the biggie. Hmm. Right. That's the one we all talk about. And uh, the Constitution established terms limits, term limits for state office holders. How do we not do that? They just forgot that. We have term limits for the county. All the counties have term limits. Mm -hmm. But the Constitution established term limits for state office holders, provided a requirement for an annual balanced budget, and laid the groundwork for the return of federal land such as Koholave. Um, and in an effort to right wrongs done toward Native Hawaiians since the overthrow of the kingdom in 1893. Now, that's word for word in the Constitution. Do we, does anybody know that? That's something that we have to you know, look we, at. I mean, I know you we need have, to. We, we have you civics, need to. And civics education usually at the federal level in terms of, you know, we have, uh, um, you know, judiciary, uh, was it uh, executive, and we have um, legislative. But I think also that needs to be taught also at the state level because that has more of an effect in some cases than anything else. State and county level. But state constitutional, but it's there. I'm, you know, I didn't make it up. I'm not that good. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about, I mentioned to you mm -hmm. and our audience that at the ConCon, the 78 ConCon, mm -hmm. there were all of these legislators and incumbents. Ah, see if any of these names rec you recognize. 1978, Carol Fuganaga, mm -hmm. Helene Hale. You remember Helen Hale. Jeremy Harris, Leslie Hara Jr., Barbara Morimoto, Joseph Suki, and John David Wahe the third, all of which were delegates. And they're still out there. Mm -hmm. So if we have a con con, how many of our sitting legislators will be delegates? I think there's a quite a bit that will be. Hmm. Does that change anything? Not that well, changes anything, but I mean, it, it opens up more of, like you say, Pandora's box, as once we open it up, then other types of outside forces have the ability have to, to, yes. to change things on there. Yeah, and that's, that's the real, the outside forces. Mm -hmm. What do you think, who do you think would be an outside force? One of the biggest outside forces that most people, and I, you know, we, we have discussions of people who, you know, who is the enemy when it comes to this? And I hate using the term enemy, but who are the ones who 
will just be against these types of you know things like a constitutional convention. Or who would tend? Oh no, I guess I phrased it wrong. Who would benefit from major change? I think one of the, the ones who have the ability to benefit from it were groups like ALEC that we mentioned before, right. American Legislative Exchange Council. Um, they are at the forefront when it comes to things, uh, trying to slowly peel away, you know, labor rights, mm -hmm. uh, workers, you know, protections, and that's something that we need to be aware of. I know there's certain groups that are aware of it, but the general public needs to know when they hear these things or, you know, this advertisement is paid. Uh, Paid for and bought by you know this group, whatever it is. So um, I think that goes along with the civics education that we talked about. Well, we have um, marriage equality mm -hmm. is op would be open. Um, medical aid and dying. Um, minimum wage. Mm -hmm. And our medical care, which we. How it is the best in the nation? Nineteen seventy-four prepaid health care act. Yes, it, all I mean, of those. It, it has those. It has its issues. I grant you. You know. I, I mean, all of those things are open. Mm -hmm. And if you've got people that have money that want to do away with that, that can get enough delegates, mm -hmm. then we have an issue. We have a real problem. Well, if people think that it's only going to be germane to just Hawaii, like whatever influences are just going to be from Hawaii, and, and that's it, and just people from Hawaii. But we have to understand that there's an outside world out there. And they are going to, you know, like, for example, Alec and other groups like that, that will bring and use their money through whatever organization. We have what's called a state policy network um, that is, is run through, you know, through Coke Industries and uh, that use that as a funding method to get money to different types of organizations. Now, the thing about it is, is that they will put even more resources into what that agenda is. And if it means you know we lose our 1974 prepaid health care act, there's people who I know who don't like the way it's done at you know the way it's currently done. It takes a, it cuts a lot of people out of it. But are we going to risk doing that and not having anything at all? Mm -hmm. You know, I think as we, we we make those changes, that's important. We talked about constitutional amendments. We do need to think. I think we need to. What I found. Okay. I lost it. Anyway, um, a lot of papers there. Not too much paper. Too much paper. Uh, I I think that we need not just you and me, mm -hmm. but we need to really talk about this so that people thoroughly understand. I think part of this low voter turnout is that people don't think they have something to vote for. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Most people are voting against, but we need people to understand what it is and how important that mm -hmm. voting for that. So I'm asking you, as we move down closer to November, will you come back and let's talk some more? Sure. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to spend time with you. Thank you. Aloha. Michelle. Aloha. And we'll be, see you next time.